Hi, my name is Sam Scherer, and on behalf of Corskin, I'd like to welcome you to our talk entitled Detailed Mineralogy and Texture Using Hyperspectral Pore Imaging. So spectroscopy hyperspectral has been around for a long time, so trust me now, over 40 years. Um, satellite data, airborne data, um, many of you are probably familiar with the ASTER system, um, Worldview 3, um, more recent. Um, this to the right is a picture of an airborne system, um, high map. Uh, this is a picture, um, or map rather, of Afghanistan with the hyperspectral imagery draped on top of it. Uh, some of you might also be familiar with uh, handheld systems. This here is a TerraSpec Halo, but the Pimas came out in the early 90s. Um, what many miners, many explorationists do is they take um, a single point and usually every meter, every other meter, one core box. Um, and that's what that's giving you um, is is, is giving you information potentially on the mineralogy that you have in that single point. Um, minerals, um, it's called a spectra, and minerals, um, especially alteration minerals, tend to have um, basically a fingerprint, and that's what we call spectra. And so you take that, and then the next scale up that you can get, uh, or down, depending on which way you look at it, would be, um, would be looking at hyperspectral core imaging. This is a more recent innovation, uh, the core scan system itself um, images at 500 micron pixels um, and delivers then approximately 200,000 pixels in, in a meter. So what you're left with, instead of just getting a single point that could give you maybe one to two minerals, what then you start to see is a whole slew of minerals. And you get to see a map of the, these minerals distribution and their spatial relationship to each other. So here, um, on the left, you have a picture of a, of a core scan um, lab going on site. Uh, this one in particular is going to a project in Alaska in the US. Um, and then over here is a picture of our actual system scanning some core. Fundamentally, what are we doing here? Uh, what, it, what are uh, spectroscopists doing um, and how is our technology working? We're using a portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. We're using um, the visible near infrared through the shortwave infrared when we're talking about core scan. And what we're essentially looking at um, are, um, are these regions over here. And this will be able to identify mineral groups such as clays, sulfates, carbonates, micas, amphiboles, iron oxides, and a whole slew of others. Um, essentially, um, when you're looking at the, uh, when you're particularly looking in the, the veneer, you're looking at electronic absorption features, and that kind of leads you to just about 1400 nanometers and then it turns over more to the vibrational absorption features. And all this is to say is that minerals have bonds in them and these chemical bonds interact in different ways. And for example, if you um, have taken a, a point where there is some carbonate, those carbonates were able to identify them because there's specific features uh, here, for example, here, the more famous one at uh, 2340 uh, nanometers, um, where these, different absorption features are saying diagnostically that you have a carbonate here. And that's what's happening for many, many minerals. So when, um, when you talk about, well, what can CoreScan do for my project? Can you, can you look at chips? Can you look at, can you look at whole core? Does it have to be split? Does it have to be cut? We can look at all of them uh, for many reasons that um, we can talk about later at the booth. Um, but we, uh, we image tons of different materials. Uh, we image soils, we work on blast holes. Um, if you're in the oil industry, we do a lot of cuttings. Um, all these um, can be um, imaged and analyzed without issue. Uh, in terms of where we're located, uh, currently we have operations spanning the globe. Um, we have bureaus set up right now where you can ship your core to so that we could have a quick look, do a trial. Um, we have them set up in, in Santiago de Chile, we were in um, Hermosillo, Mexico, as well as in Perth, Australia, and otherwise, where you're looking at, at these other little core scan points are just different areas where we have on-site laboratories working with specific companies, and where you can see the 24-hour signal, that indicates that that lab is operating 24 hours a day. Uh, when we come to site, the lab is fully self-contained. You're looking at a project that we had going on in Chile. Um, it comes in a 20, uh, 20 foot C container. This way, everything's protected, everything's ready to go, especially when you're scanning. You don't want any uh, particulate matter, any dust coming in. It, you don't want anything to affect uh, the way the spectrometers are working, all air conditioned, heated, et cetera. 
Um, it's turnkey operation, real-time data processing, if that is what you're interested in having for your particular project. Um, and we can support 24-7 oper uh, uh, operations. Uh, our services, when you talk about our spectrometer in, um, in general, um, or more specifically rather, um, our spectrometer, we're looking at, um, we're giving you high resolution core photography, 50 micron pixels. So you're looking basically at, your, at the drill hole scale, you're looking at it at close to a hand lens resolution. Um, we have three uh, completely co-registered um, uh, infrared spectrometers in the Vineyard and two in the, in the SWIR. Uh, those are at 500 micron spatial resolution and about four nanometers uh, spectral resolution. And then uh, we also have a laser profiler that's uh, mapping core morphology. Uh, and this we use for geotechnical applications and that's at 500 micron spatial resolution and 20 micron um, height resolution. And all of these um, are completely spatially co-registered. Core scan uh, outputs, so we, we have images. Um, that is our, probably our most infamous uh, thing that we have, most famous rather. Um, so we're capturing high quality data and we're capturing mineralogical complexity, the variability. Um, these are some examples of some chips uh, from a project and in each chip tray, which can be variable, but we're collecting in this case about 1500 spectra or pixels rather um, over these trays. Um, and also not only are we collecting all this data. So here, for example, you have um, the you have um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the map of saponite, here you have a map of quartz uh, um, of occurrences, chlorites, um, iron oxides, kaolinites, white micas. Not only that, but all of our data as well comes in CSV format. Um, and that CSV data can be integrated with a whole, um, with anything that accepts CSV. So whether it's one of our, one of our partners or it's, um, a database that you have, um, a statistical program that you're using, a different, um, a different 3D modeling program, this can be incorporated into all of them. So an example workflow, how, how would I go about using this? Um, you could, you know, you would first collect, say, your, your data, um, you could do a quick log, um, then you would, um, you would scan the core, there would be a spectral data interpretation of it. Then you can use the images in a specific way, whether you're gonna use them to help you core log, you're gonna use them to maybe do some textual analysis for Geomet. Uh, you can also use that semi-quantitative mineralogy to help with um, and integrate with complementary data sets even, whether it's chemistry, geophysics, use that for some machine learning, use it to help um, in, improve your, your existing uh, 3D models. Um, this is just an example. There's tons of different ways that you can use this data. Um, also, just taking note that images themselves are data. So I think for a lot of us, it's much easier um, to to take that that point data and to use that um, because you know it's numbers. But on the other hand, images um, are are data as well. So you can use this, for example, um, for textual machine learning analysis very um, very readily. This is an example, another example of some of our spectacular imagery. This is looking at a porphyry deposit. Um, in South America. And the final thing that I really wanted to touch on was just that in addition to having all this incredible mineralogy, we also have, um, we have geotechnical capabilities. So, um, and not only do we just have this, um, that we have the laser profiler for core morphology, but we also have, um, because we have a co-register with the photography, using that in conjunction with this RGB imagery, um, we, it provides advantages over other systems because you can tell whether something is, for example, is it a fracture or is it actually a vein? Um, so and in addition to that as well, because we have the co-registered mineralogy, you can also say, well, what actually is in that, um, in that fracture? So it's all very interesting. And again, come see us at the booth. We would love to talk to you more about this. So what is the role of hyperspectral core imaging in the mine cycle? Um, it's really, it's honestly everywhere that we've been, that we've been operating, um, it's changing the way that geoscientists, metallurgists, engineers interrogate geological material, whether it's drill core, hole cut, split, it's RC chips, blast holes, geometallurgical test work samples, soils. It's changing the way we look at things because now we can see, now we can use all this mineralogical information. Um, but when it comes down to it, 
this is just an additional layer of information that you scientists, engineers can use to improve their understanding of mineralogy and the relationships amongst uh, minerals within their project. It's not the answer, if you will. There's a lot of a lot of work that has to go into, you know, how do you layer this into the existing models that you have or to the, the interpretation that in which you're currently working on. And like I was saying, it can be integrated into 3D models, data science workflows, as well as implemented into exploration, mines, uh, geo, geometallurgical and geotechnical programs. So thank you very much.